This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this mini plant tour. As you can see, we are in my kitchen at the moment. I'm recording this in post commentary, it was just easier. I actually had to wait until the sun passed over the house to film this. By the time I'd done that, I was in my pyjamas. So although I'm sure no one would mind me doing a plant tour in my pyjamas, I thought I'd set this one out. But at least this way you get some meaty, chocolatey audio. So, quick tour of my kitchen. It doesn't look like much, but I promise you, this is an absolute sunbox. To the point where I'm probably going to have to get something to cover my skylights to stop it burning some of the plants. I haven't had too many issues yet, and I can probably get through the winter with it, but we'll see how we go. It's a reasonably sized room. It's pretty realistic, this. I haven't done a ton of tidying. Everything's kind of in its place, I guess. I've done some rearranging. For example, that cabinet, the IKEA cabinet, that is probably not going to live there. It's just sort of there right now. Also, this big plant wall eventually will become a plant wall. So I'm going to be growing things at the bottom to have loads of space. So I'm going to be growing things up the bottom, so eventually you won't see the walls. So we're going to start the tour nice and simple with this absolutely massive, massive Monstera Deliciosa large form. Nothing necessarily special about it. This is all green leaves, no variegation, no nothing. It is not, before anybody asks, this is not the Monstera from my giant living wall. That is separate. I'm going to be cutting the head off that and bringing it to my house in due course. This is one of maybe three or four that I bought in 2020. This one has grown a bit. It's not grown amazingly. It could have grown a lot better. I wouldn't say it was leggy, but it could be a lot better than what it is. So it's possible that when it grows to the top of the pole and I run out of space, I might make the rather risky decision to cut it right back down and grow it back. We will see how that goes. But a quick tour of it. Obviously, most of its leaves are intact. We will get to that. There is a leaf here at the top that didn't quite unfurl properly. I think it snapped while it was unfurling. Maybe it got stuck. I can't remember. That unfurled shortly before I brought it to this house. It'll be fine. It's just, it's not the sexiest of Monstera. That's what I have to say on that. <laughs> also, Excuse the random plant that is wrapped around the merry stem of this one. I've only done it temporarily so that the cats were less likely to get at it, but it probably needs a trim. We'll get to that later. I'm showing you now how it's attached to this moss pole, coir pole. It is not my preferred method of attaching a monstera, but this had actually previously been stuck to a wall in the unit, so I had to give it something. And along the bottom, you will see a rather weird choice. I have very quickly <laughs> thrown in some cork, I think they're mats for pans actually, from Ikea, that I've had for a long time. I used to use these to protect my Ikea shelves, but I've actually popped them in the bottom to stop my cats from essentially weeing in it. I have a cat that likes to wee everywhere, so I've put that in there to basically deter him from digging. Not only that, but the very same cat uh, did this to my Monstera leaf. So I've told the story on Instagram, but if you missed it, this Monstera used to be a lot closer to the litter tray. And basically I have two cats, if you don't know. One of them buries his business quite fine. The other one doesn't really like to. You might have a cat that does the same. I don't know. But he basically likes to stick his head out of the litter box and scratch midair, other surfaces, anything that he can get his hands on. So he's made a mockery of my beautiful Monstera, but I guess it's, well, it's something. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I did ask you guys on Instagram if you wanted me to remove it or keep it, and you said keep it. So that's what that looks like. That's just there now. I guess when you move out from far away, it's not that obvious. It kind of just looks like it should be there. And I guess if I did remove it, then there would be a big gap. So I'm not that mad about it. I don't know if you can tell the size on this, by the way. It is absolutely huge. It is absolutely huge. Um, that big white ugly thing is a litter robot for, it's like an automatic litter box for the cat. And it's now out of reach of the Monstera, thank goodness. But basically that litter box is quite big. And this Monstera, as you can see, absolutely dwarfs it. The pole is on a bit of a lean. 
It is what it is. It's a big plant. I'm doing my best with it. I've actually tethered it slightly to the shelf, but you will not really see that. Anyway, moving on from the big boy. This here is one of my prized possessions. This here is... what is it? It's Epipremnum Cebu Blue. As I mentioned before, it's quite long. It probably needs a chop. Now, normal people probably wouldn't need to chop this. I'm going to because of the cats. I don't want them trying to jump up and pull it and basically pull it off the shelf. That's the only reason why I probably need to chop it. This plant was basically made from, oh, I don't know, 50 cuttings maybe that I brought into the shop years ago, maybe three years ago. And they sort of went past their sell-by date. Nobody really wanted them anymore. So to save on space and to make a cute plant, I basically shoved them all together and started to grow them. There are a few casualties along the way, but it's pretty stable now. It doesn't look, I wouldn't say it looks immaculate or anything. That's probably because when it was in the shop, it's had a lot of mist waterings. But honestly, I wish, in fact, I may have a picture somewhere of when it first came to this house. And I don't think it was trailing too far over the shelf because again, I gave it a haircut, but it's grown a lot since, to be quite honest. Ah, uh, one of my favorite anthuriums. Very quickly, this is Anthurium Forgetii dark form. Really beautiful plant. They do seem, I don't want to say they're hard to get, but they're not the easiest plant on planet Earth to get. But if you like veinage that is very, very muted slash not really there at all, then this might be a man. He grows just as well as any other Forgetii as well. So quite happy to have him there. Though he is small, I do have some much larger ones at the shop. Next up, we have, oh, I love this guy. I love this guy so much. This is Anthurium crystallinum red. Red crystal, red crystallinum, whatever you want to call him. He's, he looks a bit weird the way he's grown. I think I covered this when I originally repotted him, but he's just grown a really weird way. So now I'm having to live with it, basically. He has flowers as well as a couple of other Anthurium on here next to him, but he's doing all right. He just looks a bit... I don't know, a bit spread out maybe. Now one quick thing to mention, I will do it super quickly before we move on, is that I've had some pest issues, but I will get to that in a little bit. So if you see any residue on leaves, if you see any leaves that look less than perfect, specifically on Anthurium, that is why I've since dealt with it and hopefully they're on the mend. Right, this plant, I love this plant. Look how sexy this plant looks. This here is Anthurium pallidiflorum. Uh, I think it's narrow. It doesn't look so narrow there. I don't know why it had like one rogue fat leaf, but it's very, very nice. Now it's previously been in the Ikea cabinet that sits in the kitchen there, and I've moved it out. I'm gonna see what happens with him. Hopefully he lives, hopefully he doesn't go crispy. If he goes crispy, I'll be really upset because he's literally, he's immaculate. You might be able to catch there the two leaves he's had since me, the two long ones, and the two short stumpy leaves he's had in the shop. He does have another one on its way if your eye is keen enough. So he just sits and he just chills there. Right, this is slightly depressing, so you may remember this. This is my massive Anthurium crystallinum. Oh my god, since he got here, I've had nothing but problems with him. I've had bacterial rust a little bit there, but the main problem he got, which is probably how they've transferred around my house, is spider mites. He did have more leaves, I've since had to cut them off. Now he's been treated for them, so if you notice them, hopefully they are dead or dying. <laughs> we will see. Guys, honestly, it happens to everybody. It happens to everybody, okay? It's obviously triggered them since I've moved the plants from the shop to here, because obviously in here it's less humid. It's maybe 50%. So I expect some bother, but we will see how it goes. Yeah, he's just, he's not looking his best, is he? Hold that thought, I'd like to talk about Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video. If you're looking to create and manage your own website online, then Squarespace might be exactly what you're looking for. My shop, the Right Plant Shop, uses Squarespace, and also my brand new plant care brand, Nurture System, also uses Squarespace. But recently, guys, Squarespace just got even more slick. Here's a generic website I've made. In this case, we've gone for fitness. Why not? I can add a new section, make it an introduction. I can, of course, add any text I want. But a really cool thing I can do here is to use Squarespace's new AI feature, where basically I tell Squarespace to write me an introduction based on whatever I tell it to. Here's a full-blown intro that the AI has written about fitness and counting macronutrients. It's also written it in a conversational style that I picked earlier in the setup process, which is really cool. If you want 
want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a webshop like mine, head to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Allen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, back to the video. Right, quick little tour of this one. I don't know why he's sat here, but why not? This, I don't know what this is. I'm calling it like Anthurium SP chocolate. I've sold maybe one or two of them at the shop. Completely unknown Anthurium. He doesn't look chocolatey on camera, but I promise you his new leaves look very chocolatey. And he, I nearly said he dries off. He hardens off a really, really dark green. But the beauty is when it comes in. Now, I do actually say dark green, it's kind of like a chocolatey dark green. I will try and put some in pictures on Instagram whenever, you know, a new leaf hardens off or something, so you can kind of see what he looks like. And down we go. Oh, we're gonna go to this guy. Okay. So, this I thought was hard to see, but I believe my camera has captured it. This here is Monstera Deliciosa. It's a sport and it's green on green variegation, right? Now bear with me, I promise. I promise you'll see it. I promise you'll see it. If you look closely, you can see two tones on the plant, but I admit it's very minimal. Now this can look more obvious. I believe these leaves came out when the Monstera, you know, this is a cutting from it, it's a head cutting, when they're a little bit more in the dark. So future leaves hopefully will have more, do I, dare I say punch, maybe? Uh, you can see some old remnants of the cat that thought it'd be a good idea to claw that as well when that was close to the litter tray. You will see one other leaf like that later on from yet another Monstera. But he's doing okay and he's got really good variegation. I think the second problem with this cutting is, this head cutting, is that there is so much variegation on it, it almost just looks green. There, you can see it much, much, much better now. I promise, guys, it's there. It's a terrible example because really, with green on green, Personally, I would like to see more of a blocky, obvious variegation. I don't really want to see it like this. I think it works great on other plants, maybe like Albo, maybe even Aurea. But for green on green, I'd rather not see it like this. Let's give it a chance. It hasn't actually grown yet, <laughs> to be honest. I don't know why, it's just not budged. Let's give it a chance and we'll see what it does. He is very beautiful though. He might not be for everybody, but you tell him on a bit of a monster kick. If you can't now, just wait 10 minutes and I promise you will. Moving on to this guy. This is quite simply Philodendron Gloriosum. Is he variegated? No, he's not. No, he's not. Why you ask? I don't actually know why I brought him here. I'm going to be honest. I thought he was regular form. I, I Now I don't know. First, I thought he was regular form. Then I thought he was dark form. Because if you guys don't know, I went on a little quest to try and find a dark form Gloriosum. So I looked and I thought, hmm, he looks quite dark. I think I kind of take it back now, and I don't think he is as dark. I think he might just be regular Gloriosum. But you know what? He's here now, and now he lives here. This is his house. You know, that's him. That's him. He's planted up a little bit weird. He, I think he was a bit too long for the pot, right? And I was, I was planting him up really quickly. And he, his roots were a little bit small for the pot. So I cut his back end off, his bottom, if you will. And I actually planted it up in the same pot. But I just put the butt cut sort of at the back next to the other butt. The camera does pan over. And when I'm filming it, because I'm just sort of talking along with this, I don't know how well you can see what's going on. But there is essentially two chunks of Gloriosum in there growing separately. What am I going to do with them? Guys, nobody knows. Nobody knows, not even me. Okay, the next plant. I love this plant, but I've had some disappointment with, okay? This is Philodendron Jose Bono by Tet Tenu or Sharonia, I can't remember. This is a beautiful plant. But guys, I keep snapping leaves off it. This is the second leaf now that I've snapped off just by being totally careless. It's gorgeous, but the leaves are so ready to snap. I don't know if it's just me. I don't know. It's growing okay. It had a bit of slowed growth and it had a bit of yellowing, but that's probably due to the spider mites. Uh, quick word on these moss poles. I will leave the link for these in the description. I love these. It's real moss tethered onto a PVC pipe and you can basically extend them. So you don't have to have your plants on really tall poles 
and sort of let them grow in. You can just extend them as you go. So you end up with an appearance that looks like a little bush rather than a bush attached to a big stick. He is doing really well. It's just, I think he's recovering from the spider mites that I found on him. I found them on him and I think the crystallinum at the same time. So that's the tea with that. He's, he's going to be okay though, guys. I promise he's going to be okay. We hope. <laughs> Right, next up, this is a good one, and I don't think a lot of people have these. Not saying it's rare or anything. I'm just saying I don't think anybody actually wants them. I don't know. This is Thormatophyllum African Fantasy, and I gave it to my parents years ago as basically a lonely, one-leafed plant that was miserable. My parents then grew it big and beautiful, admittedly not as spread as it is now. It's done that since it's made it back to my house. I should probably try and sort of tie it together and group it a little bit more but he's done really really well he badly needs a repot he's got residue on his leaves from the pesticide so i'm not being lazy and not dusting my leaves it's literally pesticide but he absolutely needs a repot like it's not even funny at this point i realize he's not to everybody's taste you know it's not for everyone guys i get it but i quite like him so let's just see how he does for us he might not live here permanently for some reason, I actually see a really big monstera growing up the gap between those two shelves there. I don't know why, just a nice small form or something like that. We'll see, we'll see, we might move him. Right, another casualty. This once gorgeous thing, and I know you know it was gorgeous because a lot of people seen it on Instagram. This is my Anthurium Bessii Aff. And don't get me wrong, it is still gorgeous. It is still gorgeous. It's just, it's suffered, okay? I didn't realise it was spider mites. I thought it missed a watering. It hasn't. It's actually covered in spider mites. Isn't that just wonderful? You spend all this time growing plants. You make sure they're perfect. You feed them good. You do all the things. You get beautiful, beautiful leaves. No crispiness, no nothing. And then you get spider mites. So, I'm beginning to sound like a broken record, but that's what's happened right this is not going to be as easy to see and um, this shouldn't live here i'm gonna be straight up with you i filled a gap this shouldn't live here this here is monstera burly marks flame it's young but it's just started to fenestrate so i'm really happy about that there is actually two in the pot there so you needn't be depressed if your baby bmf does not look like this i put two together why Ugh. the pot was too big and i thought why not because i can always just sell off one or I don't know, take cuttings from one or something like that. Oh, you can actually see where it's been cut from a little bit on the base of one of them. Very nice. Hey, that could all be the same plant genetically. Who even knows? Who even knows? And this next, well, it's a little bit bedraggled. I won't lie to you. This poor plant here is Philodendron heteracium. I guess it's just variegated. Um, another compendium of cuttings from my shop that honestly... This thing had a million, and I mean a million and one, mist waterings. I do not exaggerate, guys. I really don't. This one, this one's, this one's been through it, okay? So it's very crispy. It was limp yesterday when I brought it in. So I've watered it, and it, it's picked up a bit, but it doesn't look great. Um, in four weeks, it'll probably look absolutely incredible. But for now... You can just, you can just tell she's not living her best life. She hasn't grown into the spot either. That's why it looks a bit weird because it hasn't quite grown in. Oh, shout out. This is not placed for the video, by the way. I actually keep them here like this. No word of a joke. This is my product line. If you don't know what it is, link is in the description. I sell plant care products. If you have by any chance stumbled across this video by chance, most of you probably won't. So that's that anyway. If I just pan out a little bit here, you can get a bit more of a sense of what's going on and where we're at, because I know sometimes if you stay up too close and personal to the plants, you can't really get a sense of what is going on. But I have a shelf above this one that is, it's very beautiful. And would you look at that? Would you look at my gorgeous Philodendron Spiritus Sancti? Now, this looks very full, okay? Yours might not. For some reason, mine decided to grow three separate growth points, which is honestly why there are leaves here of sort of varying sizes, okay? I'm not expecting everyone's to look like this, because it probably won't. 
So you can see the bits on the top that are mature, and I have some other growth points that are showing much smaller leaves, sometimes wider leaves. It kind of depends. It kind of depends. It's it's doing its own thing, guys. And I just, you know, I like to let it just do its own thing. Let's not bother him, you know. Let's just leave him up there. I've tried to move him, but he genuinely looks the best there, so I think that is his permanent living place. I should have mentioned before, none of these plants are in probably final places. I have just kind of placed them however I felt like, but I mean, some of them look good. I mean, it really depends. I think this Spiritus does. I can't imagine him anywhere else. <laughs> look at the flower. There's a flower that's passing over. I shouldn't say flower. People get annoyed with me. The inflorescence. Uh, is passing over there across to the Spiritus from my Anthurium Crystallinum. <laughs> that just... It just doesn't want to be here. It doesn't want to live here. It's not happy with me at all. I think I've really annoyed him. Right, this next one's really hard to see and I will pull him down at a later time. But this here is... What is it? What is it? Is it Anthurium... Is it King of Spades? No, I can't remember what he is. I can't even remember what he is. But he's quite big, though. He's grown really, really big. I'm going to have to pull this down for you guys because he's turned himself up to the skylights and as a result, we just can't see him. What is next to him, though, I'm very proud of this one, is I would say he was a plain old Anthurium Warraquinum, so basically Queen Anthurium, but he is my special handlebar boy, I call him, because he has wonderful spread out wide lobes. You can see there he's not behaving like a normal queen. He is a normal queen, as far as I'm aware, he's not a hybrid or anything of any kind. He just grows like that. So I kept him because I quite like him and he's different. And I don't know, it's, I guess it's not about rare plants, it's just about unusual and I find him quite unusual. Right, this guy, oh my God, this guy has been cut. I, I have to cut him, and I'm not exaggerating, maybe every two months, because he's growing longer and longer and longer, and I can't, like, I can't let him grow that long. One, he's going to go into the other plants, two, I just, I'm so concerned the cats will think that they can, like, climb up him or something like that. He's severely underwatered because he's on the top, and because he probably has loads of roots, so really he could do with cutting back quite significantly and growing out. But you know what? He's nice enough. That probably is where he's going to live. He could move, but I kind of like him there. I think he's quite cute. He's quite cute. And I do think that is it for, I would say, the shelves. I know we've looked at a couple of plant stands on the left, but I would say that was kind of it for the shelves. So what remains is the parts at the bottom where essentially it's basically a mini monster haven. Uh, I would say... I wouldn't say I've gone a bit far, but I think when these guys get big, then I will have officially gone a bit far. Because this first plant here is Monstera White Monster. Guys, I don't know how this works, alright? I, I just don't know. It comes in this kind of minty colour. Some leaves are whiter than others, and it just kind of... It fades to green, except it doesn't always all fade to green. I, I don't get it. And I mentioned this on a video a little while ago, but I basically said, look... I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know how much I even like it, but I'm going to bring one to my house and I'm going to grow it out and I'm going to try and understand it. So, although he looks very pretty, he's actually not my favourite at all. He's probably my least favourite and that comes under like regular green Monstera. But I'm going to keep him. We'll see how he goes. Oh, love this. This is essentially another leaf that my cat got at essentially, when he was doing his business in the little box. Oh, can you see what I mean there? There's a green leaf that's sort of... It stayed white, and then there's some white ones in the background. So, like, if it comes in white and it fades to green, it obviously doesn't fade completely to green. So, do you get what I mean? Like, I don't... I don't get it. I don't get it. But I want to understand it, so... I'll tell you something, he's sizing up quite nice. I mean, I think he's large form. I could have that wrong. I'm pretty sure he's large form. So we'll keep up to date on him and see how he grows, as I say. So we now have actually a few cuttings of Monstera Mint. So the pot on the left contains two leaves. So there's the leaf on the right here, and then there's a, a super green leaf on the left. Those two leaves belong to basically a two-leaf cutting that I took that was reverting. I took the head off I didn't want to throw the head away, so I put it up separately. And for some reason, I brought it here and said to myself, hey, that'll do. <laughs> that'll be very good enough for me. Uh, disclaimer, it wasn't. 
So after that, I went and brought home another one. <laughs> this time with more variegation, except it's, I don't know if it's karma, I don't know what it is, but it was quite variegated, as you'll see by the wonderful, quite variegated leaf up top. It did have a lot of really nice variegation and it's thrown me through a loop and it's basically booted out a very low variegation leaf. So I would say this is unstable. I'm not even going to say that. It basically functions exactly the same as Monstera Albo, i.e. it's completely chaotic. So there's nothing bad to say about it. Welcome to variegation. You know, it, it is what it is. I guess I'm just not used to... Not that I'm not used to dealing with it. I'm not used to watching it this intently if that makes sense, because there's not a lot of plants in here, so I'm kind of a little bit more eagle-eyed on them, I guess you could say. Oh, please ignore him. <laughs> it's a really old cast iron plant of when I brought into the house to basically test if I could have plants with the cats, so we can ignore him. He's basically sacrificial. He's survived okay, to be honest. Now this, I'm going to be honest with you, this is my pride and joy. I'm not too happy with the the level of variegation that he has. Now, I know a lot of people would love this, but I've mentioned this before, I do not. So what I want from a Thai constellation is basically the leaf on the top right. That That is just, that is perfect Thai constellation leaf for me. You know why? Because it looks really nice, it's not too in your face, it's not sectoral, and it's not gonna burn. Now I say this, I've had great, great luck so far with this plant not burning despite it being in the sun i might add these leaves are absolutely immaculate but i do feel like my days are numbered and i know that if i underwater this too much eh i might have some burn and the burn is going to look absolutely atrocious i'm hoping this behavior stops um i'm probably going to bring home another tie from my shop to make sure it stops <laughs> because i don't know it makes me nervous Oh, if you can see it in the shop there, just to let you know, the plants are potted up in my own brand of pond. So if they look a bit weird, if they look a bit chunkier, that is why. Honestly, oh my god, all the Monstera are thriving in this mix. Just because it's a little bit more chunky, it's a little bit more aerated. Oh, we love it. We love it. Right. This plant here. He's facing a bit weird. He's the last plant to go in, actually, and he only went in a couple of days ago. So he needs to face the window. So I've deliberately moved him so he's facing away from the window, so he sort of pulls back. But this is yet another monster mint. This one I could not leave behind, and I have high hopes for him. Now, is this too much mint? Yes, probably. Especially when I'm actually not the biggest fan of mint. I've said this before. It's not my favourite, but... Eh, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit sick of looking at Owl Ball. Maybe I'm a bit fatigued. So we've gone for mint. But to be honest, some of these specimens I probably will chop and sell. I mean, that's... Oh god, so many people would want that. <laughs> I feel really ungrateful. I just... I've got to be honest, guys. I feel really ungrateful. But he's just hes just not my favourite, you know? He's just not. I think I like the Thai more. Even with his blocky variegation, I think I like him more. But that is mainly the plants in my kitchen. As I mentioned before, my end goal is to have, at least on the bottom half of the wall, not a lot of white wall left. There will be layers of plants, they will be on plant stands of different heights, hopefully covering the wall the best I can. So it's going to become sort of a green wall at the minute. It's honestly just about adding plants that I want, that I like, and... If I'm honest, finding a place to put them whereby it doesn't, well, allow the cats to get up onto the shelves because I've had to cram, basically cram the stands full so the cats can't get up and use them to get up on the shelves because that would be terrible. But that is my wonderful, mm, sort of minimal, I'll give you that, sort of minimal plant wall. Uh, the cabinet I'm going to leave for another time because I think it's quite cute to maybe get on camera and pull those out for you to basically show you them individually. Some plants you might see more than once if they end up going in the cabinet. I'll try to be mindful of that. But until such time, guys, thank you very much for watching this mini plant tour. I hope the format was somewhat digestible and enjoyable. And if you like this video, please leave a like down below. If you'd like to see any of my other videos and you are not already subscribed, I would absolutely adore it if you could do so. In the meantime, guys, I will love you and leave you. Have a great weekend and I will see you very, very soon.
Bye, guys.